was a spoil they made you be born in a manger sweet little holy child we didn't know who you were didn't know you'd come to save us lord to take our sins away our eyes were blind we couldn't see we didn't know it was you long time ago you were born, born in a manger low, sweet little Jesus boy. The world treats you mean, Lord, treats me mean too. down here we didn't know it was you you have told us how we are trying master you have showed us how even when you were dying seems like we can't do right look how we've treated you but please sir forgive us lord we didn't Jesus born, born a long time ago, sweet little holy child, we didn't know who you
All is calm and all is bright everywhere but in your heart tonight. They're singing carols of joy and peace, but you feel too far gone and too far out of reach. Somewhere near Fuzz Island night, heaven hears the song, your broken heart has cried. Hope is here, just lift your head, for love has come to find you somewhere in your silent night. From heaven's height to manger low, there is no distance. The Prince of Peace won't go. From Major Low to Calvary's Hill, when your pain runs deep, his love runs deeper still. He has always loved you, child, and he always will. Somewhere in your silent nights, heaven hears the song, your broken heart has cried. Hope is here, just lift your head, for love has come to find you somewhere in your silent night. Lift your head, lift your heart. Emmanuel will meet you where you are. He knows your hurt and he knows your name. And you're the very reason that he came. Somewhere in your silent nights, heaven hears the song, your broken heart has cried. Hope is here, just lift your head, for love has come to find you. Somewhere in your silent night, love will find you. Love will find you, love will find you.
misery loud and clear. You can't help but love this time of year. It's Christmas time, there's something in the air. There's a little bit of heaven everywhere. Somehow there's a little more of love And maybe there's a little less of us Or maybe we're just slightly more aware There's a little bit of heaven everywhere It's the smile on a man who has finally found hope It's the tears of a mother the joy that we feel and the love that we share there's a little bit of heaven everywhere there's a little bit of heaven everywhere it's funny how it takes a holiday to show us how the world could truly change if we all took the time to really care, there'd be a little bit of heaven everywhere. It's the grace that we show to a world that needs hope. It's giving our lives, knowing they're not our own. It's a joy that we feel and the love that we share. There's a little bit of heaven everywhere. There's a little bit of heaven everywhere. Hey. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. And the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strength. There's a little bit of heaven everywhere. There's a little bit of heaven everywhere. There's a little bit of heaven everywhere. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. the birthday of Jesus the King. And um, with that, uh, we are going to now prepare uh, for our service as we have our prelude with Jim and Gary.
We have watched, we have waited, we have lit the candles, remembering the promises of God with prayer. We light the first candle in hope. We light the second candle for peace. We light the third candle in joy. And tonight, and we light the fourth candle with love. And tonight we light the white candle reminding us of the light of Christ. Here are God's promises in Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Let us pray. God of hope, peace, joy, and love, bring the light of Christ into our broken lives and world and give us your salvation. Amen. Yes. <clears throat> Let us now stand and sing together, Joy to the World. <clears throat> Hey, Ed, come check out my North Star Christmas tree topper at Levitate's. Is this a gummy bear? Yeah, we lost baby Jesus. Hey, check out these LED lights. I have them synced up to a 76-hour all-Christmas music playlist. There's my little Christmas DJ. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you 
wait until Christmas is over so you can go buy a new nativity set when they're on sale? Huh? No, no, oh no. We lost baby Jesus like 11 years ago. Is, is baby Jesus always a gummy bear? Oh, no, no, oh, we trade it out every year. Yeah, like uh, last year it was a uh, tiny troll doll. And the year before that, we used a uh, dog treat. They were the perfect size, but <laughs> Dalton kept taking them and eating them. You, you mean your dog kept stealing them? No, my son Dalton, he loves those dog treats. Especially the peanut butter ones. There was one year that we used a, uh, a doll head. That was creepy. We, we made a modeling clay, baby Jesus. The dog took that one, too. Um, one year, we got desperate and used an ice cube. That was a mess and a mess. Yeah, just seems like everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never lasts. Say that again. Everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never seems to last. And? And what? Say it again, slowly. Why? Just do it dulcimo, slowly, do it. I don't understand what's happening. Just do it. This is getting weird. Say it! Fine, but when I'm done saying this, you're gonna march in here and you're gonna watch my star levitate. Fine, 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 do it. Fine. Everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never seems to, oh, yep, there it is. Okay, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Is that just not the truth? We replace Jesus with everything from the latest fad that we just have to buy for our kids or grandkids to being present at the uh, latest uh, show, whatever that would be. But nothing can replace Jesus in our lives and in our hearts. Let us pray tonight. Lord, we have gathered here to celebrate your birthday. It's not our birthday, it's yours. We have become because you sent your one and only son here to earth to be one of us, to be like us. You experienced everything we experience. So Lord, when we're having a hard day, when we don't see how we can get out of the mess we've created for ourselves, you know what it's like. So Lord, tonight we not only remember you, but we come to honor and to worship you. We give this night to you. We give ourselves to you. It's the best gift that we could give. And we pray all this in your holy name. Amen. <clears throat> and now during our offering, I'm going to ask uh, the kids who are going to take up our offering to come. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we pour out, we ask you to pour out your blessings upon this offering. That as we collect, Lord, it can go to, to help those who are in need for the charities that we have chosen. And then to help support this church so that we can be here another 10, 20, 50 years right here on the corner, always being that beacon of light you want us to be. And we ask this in your name. Amen.
And now you can remain seated as we have our carol sing. We're just going to sing the first verse of three different carols. The words will be up on the screen. Now we get to the part that's my favorite. I'm going to ask all the, all the kids to come up and have a seat right here facing me. Cool. You're never too big to be a kid, Eli. I mean, Liam, whoops. Should have said James. Yes, that, uh, that's exactly right. Awesome. Okay, can you see the screens? I love this because I get to read you a story. I used to do so that, that with my kids every night while they were little. And now they're all grown up. It's such a shame they had to grow up, you know. They're still kids, but, you know, yeah. So <coughs> this year and afterwards, you all get to take this book home with you. And if you can't read yet, mom and dad can read it or you can read it to mom or dad. OK, or both. This is called The Very First Christmas and the pictures are up on the screen for you. Oh, and pay attention because guess what? 
I have questions afterwards, okay? An angel visits Mary. God sent the angel Gabriel to visit a young woman. Her name was Mary. She was scared. She had never seen an angel before. Gabriel said, don't be afraid. You are very special to God. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be called the Son of the Most High God. Mary asked, how can it be so? I am not married. Gabriel answered, with God, all things are possible. Mary said, I love God. I will do what he has chosen me to do. Baby Jesus is born. Mary loved Joseph. Mary and Joseph were going to be married soon. Joseph lived in Nazareth, but his family lived in Bethlehem. A new leader named Caesar ordered all the people to go back to their homeland. He wanted to count all the people in his kingdom. So Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem. Mary was going to have her baby soon. When they arrived in Bethlehem, they looked for a safe place to sleep, but all the rooms were full. Finally, a man was able to help them. He offered them his stable. They decided to make the best of it. Joseph made a warm place for Mary to rest. While they were there, baby Jesus was born. Guys, don't you wish it was just that easy? <laughs> Mary wrapped Jesus in strips of cloth and gently laid him in a manger. The shepherds visit. On the night Jesus was born, shepherds were watching their sheep. Suddenly, an angel stood before them. God's light shined all around. The angel said, do not be afraid. I bring joyful news to all people. Today, in the town of Bethlehem, a Savior has been born. He is lying in a manger. Then a choir of angels appeared. They sang, glory to God in the highest, peace and goodwill to everyone on earth. The shepherds rushed to Bethlehem. There they found baby Jesus. They told Mary and Joseph what the angel said. As they returned to their sheep, the shepherds told everyone what they had seen and heard. All along the way, the shepherds shouted praises to God. The bright star and three visitors. When Jesus was born, God put a special star in the sky. Some wise men who lived far away saw this star. They knew it was a sign from God that a new king had been born. The wise men followed the star. On their way, they decided to stop in the city of Jerusalem to see King Herod. The wise men wanted to ask him about the baby king. Now, Herod was a mean king. You must find the baby king so I can worship him too, Herod said. But that was a lie. He wanted to get rid of this new baby king. When the wise men left Herod's palace, they followed the star, and the star led them to Bethlehem. There they found young Jesus. They worshipped him and gave him gifts fit for a king, gold and sweet-smelling spices. After the wise men left Jesus, an angel appeared to them in a dream. He warned them, do not go back to King Herod. So the wise men went home on a different road. An angry king. Does he look angry or what? When the wise men did not return, King Herod became very angry. He yelled at his soldiers, Go and find the boy. 
I will be the only king of the Jews. But God's angel warned Joseph in a dream, take your family and escape to Egypt. Do not return until I tell you it is safe. That night, Mary, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus left for Egypt. Years later, God's angel said to Joseph in a dream, King Herod is dead. Now it is safe for you to leave Egypt. So Joseph, Mary, and Jesus left Egypt and went back home to Nazareth. When Jesus grew up, when Jesus grew up, he did many amazing things. Jesus healed sick people, calmed dangerous storms, and fed thousands of people from just a little bit of food. He could do these things because he is God's son. Jesus loved people so much, he died on a cross for everyone's sins. He is in heaven now, and someday he will come back to take all the people who love him to heaven. So I have some questions for you going right back to the beginning of the story. Who, and you have to raise your hand, okay? Who appeared to Mary? Who was it first? And do you know his name for an extra point? That's okay. Do you know his name? Gabriel, very good. All right. What was going to happen to Mary? She was going to become pregnant and have a baby, right? What was the baby's name supposed to be? Jesus, very good. Okay. Mary loved two people, the story told us. Who was the first one she loved? Do you know? Joseph. Joseph, but there was Jesus or God, right? Because she loved God and she said, I will do what God wants me to do. Very good. And they took off and Joseph and Mary had to go on a journey. Where did they go? Do you remember where? Oh, that's all right. Not Egypt, not yet. Where did they go first? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Very good. Okay, they went all the way to Bethlehem. And when they got there, they needed somewhere to stay, right? Where did they stay? The stable and they built a bed out of hay. Built a bed out of hay. Very good. In a manger. Yeah. Can somebody tell me what a manger is? Do you know what a manger is, Aaron? A place where you put your baby in. That's where they put their baby, isn't it? Yes. It's actually a place where animals eat hay. And that's where they put Jesus. It's amazing because animals ate in that place. And Jesus was going to be the bread of heaven, the food for all of us to save us from our sins. Um, okay. So then who were the first visitors who came to see Jesus? The shepherds, very good. Who told them to visit Jesus? Anybody down here? We haven't had some answers down here. Angels, very good. All right. After the shepherds saw Jesus, what did they do? Do you know? Tell everyone, very good. They didn't keep their mouths shut, did they? They went out and told everyone. It's why we know the story today. Much later on, Jesus is probably about 18 months or two years old. They had three special visitors. Who were they? You forget? Who were they? Go ahead. Wise men. Three wise men. <coughs> and uh, they stopped in Jerusalem to ask directions from whom? Who did they ask directions from? Not an angel this time. It was from a man. Do you remember? <coughs> the king, what was the king's name? King Herod. Was he a nice man? No. 
He was mean and he got angry. Right. Um, <clears throat> what did he want to do to Jesus? You know? Is it take him away? He wanted to kill him because he thought he should be the only king. All right? Okay, so he was not nice at all. What are the three gifts that the wise men brought? <coughs> Can you think of one? Frankincense? Gold? Myrrh. Very good. Those were the three things that they brought for him. And... Um, did they tell them, did they go back and tell King Herod where they could find Jesus? Yes or no? No, no. Why not? Go ahead. Very good. Yes, they wanted to kill him. Absolutely. Um, and then an angel appeared to Mary and Joseph to keep them safe, safe and told them to go where next? Egypt. And they spent quite some time in Egypt. Jesus, when he grew up, loves everyone. Do you love everyone? Now think about it, because if you say yes, that might not be quite true, right? No. There's some, we should love everyone, but sometimes it's very hard, isn't it? If there's someone mean to us, we don't like we don't think we should love them. But Jesus loves everyone. Like bad guys. That's exactly right. But Jesus even loves the bad guys because he wants everyone to go to heaven where he is. Jesus came. And when he grew up, he died on the cross. And we're going to have communion today. And that's what we celebrate. That Jesus came as a baby. He grew up. He died on the cross so that we could be saved because he rose again, right? And when he rose again, he said, he's coming back when, we, when, he, when it's time is ready and he's taking each one of us to heaven and he has a special place for you and for me. Mine's going to be a nice quiet corner where there's no kids and I can't get interrupted. It's going to be awesome. Not really. I'm just joking. I have a book for each of you and also some other items in those bags. Okay, let's pray before you get your book. And I also have a light for you. Okay, each of you can take two lights, one for each hand. Okay, I'm going to put them on the step. Grab a book. Um, they're all the same. The bags are different. So you can just grab a bag when, you, when you're done and grab two lights. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we thank you for these children, and we thank you for Jesus, who came and was born as a baby, just like we were, and he grew up and he did good things. Lord, we pray that we can do good things and help people and love everyone like you taught us to. Lord, thank you for dying on the cross to save us from our sins and for giving us eternal life. We celebrate your birthday today. Happy birthday, Jesus. Amen. Here's the lights. <coughs> grab two and then go ahead and grab the <coughs> your bags. <coughs> Emma, just leave it sitting on the seat.
And now we get to participate in celebrating communion together. Tonight, we remember Jesus' birth, but we cannot remember his birth without remembering why he came to earth. He came to die for all our sins so that we could be reunited together in heaven. And I think tonight of all of those in our church that we just a little more than a month ago celebrated that have passed away in the last year. I think how many people in your own family and friends who have passed away in the last year or even in the last few years. And the good news is that we will be reunited again. Is that not awesome? And so I have uh, asked some helpers to come. Will you come? <coughs> and uh, after you've uh, had communion, you guys can just uh, line up right here. Um, after we've had communion tonight, as you leave by, via the sides, pick up a candle and a holder. I'm, you're intelligent people. I think you can put them together on your own, okay? So just grab those. Uh, we do it at communion, so you don't have to sit there playing with them and dropping them and stomping on them during the service. And then at the very end, there are two boxes that will be by the doors. Please just deposit the candles after you've extinguished them in the boxes. Just think I have to be absolutely clear here. On the night that Jesus gathered around the, around the table, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you, for the forgiveness of your sins and for life everlasting. And he took the cup and after asking for a blessing from his father above. He said, this is the cup of a new covenant, a promise that I make with you. My blood is shed so that your sins can be forgiven and that we can be reunited in heaven again. It's a free gift. Nothing we do can earn it. God gives it to us hard to wrap our heads around, but it's true. All he wants us to do is believe. Let us pray. Oh Lord, send down your Holy Spirit and through your power, transform this bread and this cup into the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. But as we take it, Lord, let it transform us from the inside out. Help us to remember why we're here this night, and then to live more like you in our days that we have left here on this earth. And we ask this prayer in your wonderful name. Amen. Thank you. Liam has gluten-free. So if anybody has uh, needs gluten-free elements, go see Liam. table is set. Everyone is invited. Won't you come and take?
And now the part I think everybody waits for. It's like, come on, come on, come on. We wait for this part, right? Kids, turn your lights on. You get to turn them on first. Okay, turn them on and shine them up high, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to have the kids stand up <coughs> and shine up their lights. And we're going to sing this little light of mine twice. And the lights will start going dim. And I hope everybody grabbed a candle. <coughs> and um, uh, then I will go down and I will light um, all the adults on the end, their candles. And remember, please, don't dip a lighted candle. Dip the unlighted, unlit candle. Okay? So, kids, you're going to stand up. And everyone, we're going to sing this little light of mine. Stand up and hold those lights up high. Yes. <coughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Someone's excited. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we thank you for those gathered here. Be with them. Be with them safely on their way home. And, Lord, let love and hope and peace remain in our hearts always as we go forth from this place. And we ask this in the wonderful name of Jesus and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. <clears throat>